These are strange times. When our parents were tuning cars, they'd do an entire engine swap in order to go from 150 to 300 horsepower and brag about breaking into the 14s. When I was a kid, the Ferrari F40's 475 horsepower might as well have been a million. How could someone even control such a car? And now, with computer-controlled forced induction engines becoming the rule rather than the exception, we've seen an exponential growth in the kind of power available from even light tuning. And thanks to the internet, where everyone is an expert, the answer to how much horsepower should a car have is always more. When you combine turbocharging with the endless pursuit of power, sometimes things go boom in a very bad way. Call me crazy, but I love old school hot rod. Heads, cams, valves. Stuff that bitch full of more gas and more air and watch it come alive. The thing is, I don't really like old school cars. I like when they go old school on the new stuff. And that's where Sharkworks and Evo MS come in. Because their GT3 RS is packing a 4.1 liter stroker motor making 540 horsepower. That's 20 more than the 911 Turbo makes, mind you. All motor on pump gas. But before we drive that, Let's take a look at their Mark 1 3.9. This is a 2007 uh, 997 Mark 1 GT3 that uh, I sent to Alex Ross, uh, Shark Works up in Northern California, and they uh, converted it to a 3.9 liter, 502 horsepower. It's, it's just the greatest car I've ever owned in my life, without a doubt. I've had a bunch of different sports cars. The first one I had, when I first started getting some money, I got a Supra Turbo in uh, 1994, I think it was. Um, and then after that, I got an NSX. I liked that a lot. And then I got a 996 Turbo that broke five times. It was the lemon of all lemons. And it almost steered me away from Porsches. Because I, I got that car, and then after that I got another NSX. This one I put a supercharger on. Then I started looking into GT3s, because I thought, well, what I, I like raw cars. I like a car that like I can feel the road, I, I, responsive. I, I like manual transmissions. I like a car that handles well. So I got a uh, 997 Mark II GT3, the uh, narrow-bodied one, and I uh, loved it. It was great. But uh, I went online and I started learning about the Sharkworks cars. So I got rid of the Mark II GT3, picked up this white one. Uh, I never even got the car. It went directly to Alex, right from the dealer, and uh, off to the races. When I drove the 997 GT3 RS in stock form, I pretty much told myself that it was the best car I've ever driven for good reason. It's the closest that you can get to a race car for the street, but it doesn't beat you up the way that almost all other race cars for the street would. So what we have here is a GT3 RS with Sharkworks 3.9 engine upgrade, as well as a couple other customizations by Joe Rogan. This car is pretty nuts. Take everything you like about a GT3 RS, add about 85 horsepower and you've got a 500 horsepower car that only weighs marginally more than a stock car so about 3100 pounds when you get in this car it takes about five seconds to realize that this is the best car ever the power band is off the chain the balance oh the balance is just the best it sounds like you're on the banking at daytona 500 horsepower at 8,800 RPM from a flat six with no turbos. <laughs> when it hit, you know, it's 88 RPM red line. When you're getting into the sevens and into the eights, it's just this demonic wail, just. Oh my God. The power, man, it's not about whether this car can do an 11 second quarter mile or a 12 second quarter mile. It's about when you drive it, it is just so special. There will never be another car like this. This is the end of this era for Porsche. It's all computers and numbers from here on out. 
because Nürburgring lap times are more important than fun in the year 2014. But this is magnificent! <laughs> I'm a huge fan of manual transmissions in a car like this. I, I cry when I see the new 991 GT3s only being available in a PDK. It makes me sad. It's just, everyone's missing the point. It's shaving off tenths of a second, but losing a piece of your soul. There's like something wrong. If you watch a movie like a guy driving an old school hot rod, what do you, one of the things they concentrate on is a guy shifting gears. You know, that's part of the fun. What is this? It's too much, it's become too video gamified. It's so fast, it's so predictable, it's so comfortable, it feels like everything you want out of a sports car. Instant throttle response, motorsport technology, an analog feel, a comfortable interior, it's spacious, there, it, it feels like there's no compromise here. It's as good as I remember it and then, and then more. I want to drive the new car now. Going from the 3.9 to the 4.1, uh, you're going to feel considerably more torque down low, um, about 100 something foot pounds. The 3.9 builds and builds, um, and it's cammed to go to 8,800. Um, ours goes, to, the 4.1 goes to 8,700. Um, but it has a different power curve. It's a lot flatter. It feels a bit more like a GT2. Some people have said, uh, you know, a GT2 down low and then a GT3 up high or CGT-ish in terms of how it feels in a 911 chassis. Oh, the torque. Okay, here we go. 997 and a half GT3 RS. 4.1 liter stroker by Sharkworks. Initial thoughts. Okay, the steering wheel is thicker but everything else about the interior is basically the same. The torque. <laughs> the torque. This car has a hundred more pounds of torque than Joe's car. And getting out of that car, the last thing I thought was, I need an extra hundred pounds of torque. But guess what? Here it is. It also sounds roar, like you're using a serrated saw blade as opposed to a scalpel. Oh, it's fast. Okay, it's fast. Slightly lower red line, also carbon ceramic brakes, very effective. Oh, 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 doctor. Okay, there's a little bit more weight in the steering, but the turn in is a little bit crisper. It rides really well on these Bilstein dampers. Oh, same wonderful shifter, same wonderful pedals. Listen to that engine. Oh, yes. Oh, this is the best car in the world. Oh my God. Whoa, that's all right. I'm going really fast. <laughs> yeah, so turbo tuning, I don't want to make it sound like it's easier, um, but generally, you know, when you're using turbo chargers, you up the boost and a few other variables and you're going to make 100 horsepower. On a naturally aspirated engine that's already um, pushed extremely hard, as Porsche does on these cars, you'd have to be a moron to try and do it. And that's where we come in. Oh, it's a crazy person's car. That's what kind of person buys this. A crazy person. So what you do is you buy your GT3 RS, which because the 991 is out and you can't get them in stick anymore, has now appreciated. You then send it to Sharkworks, give them 60 grand, and they turn your normal GT3 RS, which is magnificent, into a psycho death mobile that is somehow better. This might be the best sounding road car I've ever driven. It's crazy what it sounds like in here. You know, it's got these racing spec dampers on them, but they're 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 good. It's not too stiff. It's not oversprung. The mid-range torque is where it's at. Joe's engine builds as you get to the top. This one's got a fat mid-range punch. Oh my God, in this car, I am Hurley Haywood. I am David Donahue, I'm Patrick Long. Oh my God, my kingdom to run one of these in the Nurburgring. We've raised the wing with some different uprights. Uh, so it's about three inches taller, but it looks stock. 
uh, but it functions a little better, cleaner air, but you can actually see out the back, which is useful. We've also added the four row dive planes, cunards, uh, eyebrows, whatever you want to call them. They just look weird and we like them. It's not that Porsche couldn't do what we do. They, they most certainly could do it. Um, they just wouldn't spend the money per car to do that. We're only building you know, 10, 20, 30 of these ever and uh, they're building thousands and they have to make more money and so per certain components we can spend a lot more money such as a you know eight thousand dollar billet crank that doesn't make sense for the bean counters for us it does <laughs> first gear is worthless <laughs> you get to about five grand and just breaks the tires right loose bang straight to the rev limiter the revs Okay, there is nothing about this car that isn't magnificent. This is the most magnificent car that money can buy. I am convinced of it. I would daily it. The seats are amazing. The color is amazing. The power. Oh my God. I feel like I'm in, I'm in the mall right now. When was the last time I've been this happy about anything? Oh my god, if there is a heaven, it looks like the driver's seat of this car. You've got to just slow down. You've got to like catch your breath from something like that. Next level, right? I can die happy now. Next level, right? It's the best car ever. It's the best car I've ever driven. This is the best car I've ever driven. This is the best car I've ever driven. Seriously, it's the best car I've ever driven. Well done, sir. The whole fun of driving a car like this is, first of all, the feeling that you shouldn't be allowed to have a car like this and drive on a road. The idea that any like me could just go to a store and buy one of these is ridiculous. It literally should be illegal. But I'm glad it's not.